Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Submerging Yourself into What You Read, a PD session on close reading. My name is Jeremy Crawford, and I'm doing this presentation for my EDUC 5905 class. So we're going to start off with what is close reading. It is an interaction between the reader and a text. It is about making careful observations of a text and then in interpretations of those observations. It involves rereading, often rereading a short portion of a text that helps a reader to carry new ideas to the whole text. So why use close reading in your class? So close reading uh, meets, uh, meets, a, meets the following common core standards. There's a careful meditation on text that fits close reading. It's repeated throughout the language of the standards, including reading closely and citing specific textual evidence, which is R1. Analyze how ideas develop and interact, R3. Interpret words and phrases and analyze how specific word choices shape meaning, as R4. Analyze the structure of text, as R5. Assess how to point, how point of view shapes a text, R6, my apologies. Analyze two or more texts to build knowledge, R9. Powerful close reading instruction includes, or has, it must raise engagement and joy, not diminish it. It must lead to student independence, not dependence on teacher prompting. So the students should be able to do this reading on their own at the end. It must be one piece of your reading instruction and not the only part of your instruction. So it needs to be one part of a whole. It must allow time for students to read for extended periods and across many pages of text, not interrupt time spent reading with activities. So they need to just be able to read. It must be repeated across time and involve lots of opportunities for practice, not be a one-time off-the-checklist activity. It must be designed in response to the strengths and needs of your students, not planned solely to match a book or fit a scope and sequence. So let's look at reading for understanding and looking at text evidence. So I've taken a few of the strategies uh, for close reading, and I'm going to lay them out for you, but I'm not going to do them all. Uh, I will share da data with for the rest of later on. So if you're reading for caring understanding, you're learning and teaching how to read for caring understanding. It can lead to listening with caring understanding, which will hopefully lead them to live with the same caring understanding. So we teach them how to listen with caring understanding and then read with caring understanding. Hopefully it will carry over into the rest of their life. For the teacher, does the, te does the text you selected offer the opportunity to read closely for details? Is it compelling? And is it accessible to the students that you are working with? Those are all three very important things to keep in mind when you're picking out a practiced passage for close reading instruction. So looking at it for text evidence, there's three steps to reading closely for text evidence. They're deciding what to carefully look for, finding what these things have in common, so the patterns, and stepping back and seeing what new understanding this gives you about the text. After you read it, you kind of sit and you digest it a little bit to so kind of see what you got from it. So now we're going to look at our, our first activity, and this is for reading for details. So you're going to read the following passage and try and answer these the questions. So this is an excerpt from the book Things Melanie, for, or I'm sorry, the thing from the book Out of My Mind by Sharon Draper. It was published in 2012. And we're looking through the lens of things that Melody's father does. So I, what I would like you to do is take a moment and read this short passage. I will pass out the excerpt. And then I would like you to list five things that Melanie does. So thank you for taking the time to do that. Looking at word choice. So word choice, you're going to focus shifting from simply helping to find information to teaching how to evaluate the information that you find, or they find, the students find. Looking closely at word choices help to, uh, helps to understand what the author is trying to say. And here's some frames for thinking about word choice. So one pattern I see is blank with words like blank. Some words fit together like blank and make you feel blank. These words fit together because they sound and then the author could have blanked, but instead blank. There seems to be more than one pattern with blank and also blank. So now, 
we have a, a word choice activity break. And what I would like you to do is click on the Gillette ad and talk about the choices that the director made for the word choice. So now looking at point of view, everyday life is an interaction of points of view. Points of view, close reading can help to decode the subtle messages in texts and in their lives. Close reading practiced properly can help students or people to be strong, capable consumers of information and reflective, caring members of society. It's difficult to analyze a point of view if you do not understand the text. And it is not easy to evaluate an editorial's argument if you are not attuned to the nuances of the words chosen and their implications for meaning. So now, study of argument leads, hopefully, to finding bias and in information. Two rounds of reading initially. So your first round, when you read it, you're going to read for the ideas in any part of the text. And the second round is to read closely for the techniques an author uses to persuade. Then you're going to teach that some ways techniques are better at presenting an argument than others. Knowing the typical ways of arguments go wrong help students helps help students to be more specific in their critiques. Important to impart the art of recognizing subtle points a piece is trying to make. So then we're going to do a point of view activity break. And we're going to do and because we're we're adults, we're going to do our we're going to look at two articles. One is perspective is, is a uh, negative perspective about legalizing marijuana called the biggest lie about marijuana. And the perspective too is cannabis use, legalizing marijuana is the best way to protect kids. And we're going to read that, remember going back to looking at arguments. So that way you can try and find the bias. And I'm sorry if I'm flipping back so fast, but I wanted to show you what we're talking about and what lens I want you to look at these, arguments, these articles through. So here's the wrap up. There are other reasons to read closely. You can read across or comparing texts. And you can, you can read closely to look at the structure of a written piece. So I realized that I only went over three of the five. Uh, but I think this is a good place to start. And for further details, check out, and this is where I got my information, is Falling in Love with Close Reading, Lessons for Analyzing Text by Christopher Lehman and Kate Roberts. It's an excellent book. It gives lots of good frames. It gives lesson plan and ideas. It's, a, it's well worth the read. And I realized that my video, uh, so thank you very much. Okay, so Dr. Driscoll, I realized that my video is only eight minutes long, but I figure with each of my activities taking about five minutes, that would give me about 24 minutes for this PD. That's why I didn't do any more than those. And I apologize if you can't hear me that well. Only if I'm to record this and the people in the room next door are a little loud. Uh, thank you and have a nice day.